Okay, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. So it's Monday, March 22, 2021. We are slowly, slowly getting closer and closer to Holy Week. Okay. Uh, Last, well, yesterday, Sunday, we already celebrated Passion Sunday. So we're getting closer to Holy Week. And um, today's, today's gospel talks to us about forgiveness okay, and about judgment. So, no, not about judgment, but being judgmental and how we shouldn't be judgmental. Okay. Um, so anyway, let's let's the story that is being related by the Gospel of Saint John today, chapter eight, verses one to eleven, is about that woman who was caught committing the sin of adultery, and the the Jews, according to their law, um, brought this woman to be stoned to death. Okay. Stoned to death. Stoning was a very painful manner of death and execution that uh, was practiced then by the Jews in order to uh, punish people who committed very, very grievous sins. And one such sin was the sin of adultery. And it was a public kind of uh, sin and therefore... Uh, uh, in their law, it merited a public condemnation and a public manner of execution, okay? Um, which was, of course, slow and painful. Imagine being stoned, uh, really, literally, rocks thrown at you, okay? <laughs> Until you bleed to death, or, you know? So it's a very gruesome and painful kind of punishment. That was how. Uh, s severe that that kind of uh, sin was and is up to now <laughs> um, and that's how they dealt with it okay? that's how the Jews dealt with it so they brought to Jesus this woman caught in adultery and they were going to stone her, her. they were going to stone her to death but they used that occasion to test Jesus to test and see what he was going to say about what they were about to do okay so they said to him teacher this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery now in the law moses commanded us to stone such women so what do you say they said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him in case he says something different in case he says something that is contrary to what Moses has commanded them to do okay so it was a bait to make Jesus say something um, different so um, Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. Went to write something. They will have seen this in some of the movies, like in The Passion of the Christ, right? It's a very, very graphic scene of this uh, encounter of Jesus with this adulterous woman. He straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin, be the first to throw a stone at her. So they were already ready, right? Ready to throw that stone at this woman. They were ready to cast that rock they were holding on. And Jesus tells them, okay, 
If there's anyone among you who has no sin, go ahead, be the first one to cast that stone. Okay, we'll stop there. Of course, what happened was they all realized, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I have sins myself. So they, it dawned on them that, well, who are they to condemn this woman? So they started dropping their rocks that were already in their hands. And they left the woman alone and Jesus was left alone with the woman. And what did Jesus do? Well, Jesus said, woman, where are they? Okay. Because after he uttered those words, he again bent down and wrote on the ground again. Yeah. So when he looked up and said, okay, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, no one, sir. Then Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and from now on, do not sin anymore. It's a beautiful expression of how our Lord shows mercy and compassion towards this adulterous woman and forgives her sins and lets her go without condemning her. Now, uh, a few things we, we need to review here, right? Um, look what our Lord said. Those Whoever among you thinks that he has no sin, go ahead, cast the first stone. What is our Lord um, reiterating by saying that? Well, he's reminding everybody that, look, <laughs> all of you, and in fact, all of us to this day, were born into sin. Okay? We're born with original sin. And of course, we went through baptism, and baptism takes away uh, original sin. Okay? However, however, the stain of original sin remains in our souls. In other words, there's, there's, there's a defect that original sin created in our souls that, that practically scarred our 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 soul for the rest of our lives right it left a wound and that gaping wound right there that that original sin rather the scar of original sin um does not completely uh take away from us the tendency to commit sin so we have that tendency to commit sin that's why we have to keep fighting uh, to avoid sin all throughout our lives because our judgment, uh, our intellect, our wills have been damaged by original sin. So we will always have that impairment that we carry with us. And that impairment many times in our lives does not allow us to see things clearly, to judge things clearly. And therefore, we ourselves sometimes get blinded towards our own um, uh, shortcomings, towards our own sins, right? And we ourselves commit sins because of that tendency. Now, of course, we have to fight against that tendency, fight against temptations, right? Because, and no one is exempt from that, except for one person. Who was that person who was born without sin? Shabbat, huh? Our Lady, yeah, Mary. Very good, right? She was born immaculate. So she was the only one free from original sin. But all of us, unfortunately, we inherited the sin of Adam. Okay, um, So we have that tendency. Of course, what we need to do in life is to fight against that tendency. To fight against the tendency to commit sin. And that's, that's the battle of our lives every day. We try to fight sin. But what this gospel teaches us today is, is to understand that precisely because no one is exempt from the tendency to commit sin. We ourselves have the capability, have the potency, have the potential to commit the gravest sins. 
ever invented by mankind, so to speak, right? We are not exempt from committing the gravest sins. So we have to understand that. We have to realize that, that nobody is exempt even from that tendency of committing the most hideous, heinous crimes. And so, therefore, we should not judge others for the sins that they commit. Okay? We should not judge them in, by saying, oh, that person is really bad, really bad, you know. I don't like to be associated with he's really bad. But no, our Lord says through this gospel gives us the example of, number one, not judging others. Okay, If you cannot praise, say nothing. Right? That's a good motto to, to bear in mind. If you cannot praise, better say nothing. We are not we should not be judgmental. Rather, we should extend mercy and compassion towards the sinner. But we should hate the sin. such Because sin is the product of uh, the devil. Sin is what keeps us away from God. So we have to hate sin. Both our sins and the sins we see in others. We don't hate the sinner. We don't hate the person who commits sin. Right? Because you cannot hate yourself either. Right? But you should hate the sin. You should have an aversion for sin. Remember what Dominic Savio uh, uh, said, right? His motto was, death rather than sin. That's how much we have to hate sin. But we would love the sinner. Because we want that sinner to get converted. We want that sinner to turn away from his sinful life. And to go back into the fold of loving Jesus Christ, loving God, right? And living an upright life, okay? So, to do that, we should avoid being judgmental towards others. We should extend charity, understanding, and help. Help as much as we can to help that sinner recover from a life of sinfulness and go back to God. This is what our Lord shows us here by his example of forgiving this woman. Okay? So we too have to be forgiving towards others okay? without condoning the sin. Okay? If we have to point out that sin to that person, because many times these people who commit the sins are blind towards their own sinfulness. They don't understand and realize that they're committing these sins. So if we need to speak up at all, it has to be by way of correcting that sinner, helping that sinner by way of fraternal correction, if we can, right? By way of praying for that person so that he gets converted. These are our weapons, okay, to address the sin, okay? To address the sins that we witness and see in other people. And we have to use these weapons of prayer and charity. When we pray for them, that's our act of charity towards them. Okay? So we have to pray for these people who we see, obviously, are committing all sorts of sins around us. Okay? And, uh, <laughs> you know, you can begin from uh, our own situation here. Not only your brothers, your sisters, your members of the family who are close to you. But we extend this charity of praying for other sinners, right? For murderers, for abortionists, even for corrupt politicians, right? We have to pray for all of these people when we hear things in the news that are obviously, you know, uh, uh, reporting the sinfulness of other people, <laughs> the crimes they commit. Okay? They should trigger in us uh, the, the desire to help them by way of praying for them, if that is the only thing we can do. Okay? Now, people who are closer to us, we can correct their mistakes through fraternal correction. Okay? Help them that way. At the same time, we also help them with our own prayers. Okay? This is the way that we show compassion and charity towards other people who may be obviously in a state of sin. But for ourselves too, okay, for ourselves too, 
we have to realize we're not exempt right, from the possibility of committing the, the most grievous sins that we witness other people committing. So we, what, what do we have to do for ourselves? Well, we have to realize and ask ourselves, well, how might I, you know, ask, how might I, I can also fall into those kinds of sinful situations? Okay? I can also fall into that. So what, what would be the possibility that I might fall into those kinds of sins? Okay? We have to try to be aware and, you know, and try to ask ourselves, okay, how can I avoid falling into those sins? It's best to be far away from the occasions of sins, right? We talked about the occasions of sin in another commentary last week. So what are those occasions of sin that I can actually avoid for myself so that I don't fall into that same sin that the other person has committed? What can I proactively do to stay away from sin? What virtues can I try to develop in myself so as to prevent me from committing those sins? You remember, you should remember that virtues are precisely the, the good acts, the good habits that, that will help us to stay away from sin. So a good positive way of avoiding sin is to practice the virtues. Okay? Practice the virtues because you can be sure that if we practice the little virtues that we try to practice every day, those virtues will help us stay away from sin and the occasions of sin. Okay? So those are the, uh, the, uh, the things that we have to ask ourselves okay? every time we witness the sins of other people around us. Let us learn to forgive in our minds, let's be understanding about their shortcomings and realize we too are capable of those, right? And then pray for them. Use the occasion to pray for these people, okay? And then use the occasion to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, okay, how can I prevent myself from falling into those sins? What virtues can I acquire so that I stay away from those sins? Okay, that's it for us. Have a good day. <laughs> it's Monday, start of our work week and school week. Some people are having spring break. You know, make good use of your time, folks. Uh -uh. <laughs> I got a package. A package arrived. <laughs> good morning, Ava. Say, oh, we got to say goodbye to them. Huh? Say goodbye. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good day, everybody. No. No, <laughs> you don't want to greet everybody. Okay, well, have a good day, folks. Thank you for joining us. And by the way, if you want to spread these gospel commentaries to people, yeah, please like the, the, this broadcast. <laughs> okay, wait, I'm still talking. Uh, share it on your own social media. You know, like the page on YouTube if you can, please, and help spread the word, you know, so we can help more people understand the gospel uh, the way I'm trying to teach my own children understand the gospel of the day. Okay? Okay. Now we say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good day.